Who, what, where, and why? These are important words. They are all words that begin questions. Who is about a person? Who is the girl with the blue dress on? Who stole my watch? Who will come with me to the game? Who is driving us to the party? What is about a thing? What is that big thing on the sidewalk? What should I do when I get to your house? What kind of clothes should I wear to the party? What shall I buy you for your birthday? Where is about a place? Where are you going for your vacation? Where did I leave my glasses? Where did my brother go? Where on earth is Timmins? Why is the word that asks for an explanation? Why did you take the last piece of pie? Why is the world round? Why should I give you any money? Why did the chicken cross the street? They say that you should answer all of these questions if you are writing a good story. You have to give the who, what, where, and why to write a good story. Which direction? Which direction should I go in? Should I go up? If I go up, I will head toward the sky. I can go up the stairs. Should I go down? I can go down the stairs to the basement. I can climb down into a hole. Should I go left or right? I am right-handed, so I know which way right is. Should I go backwards? I would be going away from the things that I am facing now if I went backwards. If I went backwards from the thing that I am facing, I would go away from it. Should I go forward? I will just go straight ahead if I go forward. If I am facing something and I go forward, then I will go toward the thing that I am facing. Maybe I should go sideways, but which side? Left or right? It sounds very complicated, but it is not. Directions are very easy to follow if you just stop and think about them. The office. Some people work in an office. There are special tools that people in an office need to do their work. There is a computer in the office. There is a telephone. Most of the time, the secretary answers the telephone. The secretary sits at a desk. The secretary has pens and pencils on the desk. The secretary writes on a notepad. Some other things that you would find in an office would include the following: a stapler to staple pages together, a photocopier to copy pages, a pencil sharpener to sharpen pencils, a water cooler where the employees could get a drink of water. A hole punch to make holes in sheets of paper, and liquid paper, which is used to blank out errors on a page. Some offices have many employees in them. All of the employees have their own desks. Other offices just have one person at a desk. In some offices, there is a secretary or a receptionist, and then there is the boss in another room. There are often many important papers in an office. Important papers can be called documents. You might have to sign a document or fill out a form in an office. Some offices have bookshelves filled with books. The books are filled with information that the people in the office need. You will have to visit an office sometime. Maybe it will be a doctor's office or a lawyer's office. There are many different types of offices. Money. I keep my money in the bank. I have saved up my money. I saved all my pennies in a jar. A penny is only worth one cent. I have nickels. A nickel is worth five cents. A dime is worth ten cents. A quarter is worth twenty-five cents. A quarter is a quarter of a dollar. Four quarters make up a dollar. A dollar is worth one hundred cents. I saved up all of my dollars. Our dollars used to be paper, but now they are coins. We call our dollars loonies. It's a funny name. We also have two-dollar coins. We call those toonies. We have five-dollar bills and ten-dollar bills. If you are lucky, you will have twenty-dollar bills, fifty-dollar bills, and even hundred-dollar bills. Our bills in Canada are different colors. That makes them easy to recognize if you go somewhere to spend them. It is wise to save your money. If you save enough, you could have hundreds or thousands of dollars. Manners. It is good to be polite. People like you more when you are polite. 
Always say please and thank you. If you ask for some milk, you should say, "Please, may I have a glass of milk?" When someone gives you the milk, you should respond with, "Thank you." It is not difficult to be polite. You should not push or shove people. You should cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. You should address people properly. If you are trying to get someone's attention, you would say, "Excuse me." You wouldn't say, "Hey, you." There are table manners. That is where you eat properly and politely at the dinner table. You don't shove food into your mouth. You don't reach over other people's plates. You don't talk with your mouth full. All of these things are common sense. Being polite is mostly thinking about how you would like to be treated. You wouldn't want people to be impolite to you. It is not polite to point at people. It is not polite to burp out loud. It is not polite to use someone else's things without asking first. Being polite just comes naturally if you have been brought up in a home where everyone was polite. The two sexes. There are two sexes or genders. There is the male gender and there is the female gender. Males and females are different, both physically and mentally. Humans are both male and female, and animals are both male and female. If you have a dog, it is either a girl dog or a boy dog. Boys grow up to be men. Men grow hair on their faces. Men are usually more muscular than women. Men dress differently than women. Men are males. Males are masculine. Girls grow up to be women. Only women can have babies. Women are females. Females are feminine. Another word for women is ladies. It is good that we have males and females. Your father is a male. Your grandfather, brother, and uncle are males. Your mother is a female. Your grandmother, sister, and aunt are females. Me. I am special. Nobody in the world is exactly like I am. They might have the same hair color and eyes that I do, but they are not exactly like me. I am the only person in the world who thinks my thoughts. No two people in the world are exactly alike. It is good to be your own person. It is good to be creative, and be natural. People have to follow the laws and the rules. People should always be kind to others. I try to follow all the rules. I am kind to others. I am a lot like many other people. Yet I am different. I am like my friend Jane, but she has red hair, and I have dark hair. She has a loud voice, and I have a soft voice. She likes to eat vegetables, and I do not. Jane and I are the same height. We both like movies, and we are both afraid of spiders. We wear the same size shoes, and we both have the same favorite color. We are best friends, but sometimes we disagree about things. We are alike in many ways. And different in many ways. If we were all exactly the same, the world would be a very boring place. I am myself, and I am glad that I am special. You are special too. Use your own special talents and take the time to meet other people. The world is made up of a lot of different people, and that's what makes life exciting. My cat. I got my cat when she was just a tiny kitten. I named her Puff because her fur is soft and fluffy. She has white fur, but her tail, paws, and ears are black. She has a little pink nose and yellow eyes. She says meow whenever she wants a bowl of milk. I feed her cat food and treats. She washes her face with her paw when she is finished eating. My whole family loves her, and we can tell that she loves us. She loves to curl up in our laps. She purrs whenever we pet her. She is very playful. We sometimes roll up a piece of paper and throw it to her. She loves to chase the paper and hit it with her paws. She also chases bugs. Last night she chased a spider. But she was afraid to touch it. At night, 
She curls up in my bed with me. She likes to be warm. I have given her a blanket of her own, but when I put her on it, her tail twitches. Her tail twitches whenever she's upset or angry. I know she doesn't want to be on her blanket. She wants to be in my bed. I let her into my bed, and she falls asleep, purring loudly. Music. My family is very musical. My father plays the guitar. He plays in a band. The band plays country music. My mother is a singer in the band. She also plays the piano. I took the flute in music class at school. I play the flute in the school band. I also sing in the school choir. I have a low voice. My sister has a high voice. She is a soprano. At home, I like to practice the drums, but my mother says that it's too loud. Sometimes I play so loudly that I break a drumstick. I practice whenever she goes out. I would like to be in a rock band. Some of my friends and I are thinking of starting our own rock band. My sister is a very good piano player. She has won many awards at music festivals. She likes to play classical music, but sometimes I get her to play rock music with me. She is also a very good singer. I like to sing with her. We sing in harmony. I listen to music all the time on the radio. I know a lot of songs. I can sing along with most of the songs that come on the radio. I memorize the lyrics of the songs. My sister and I sometimes get together and sing our favorite songs. Maybe someday we will start our own rock band, and I will be the drummer. Spring. It rains a lot in the spring. The trees are full of buds, and the flowers are starting to bloom. My favorite spring flowers are tulips and daffodils. The birds come back from the south. I can always tell that spring is here when I see my first robin of the season. The robins pull worms from the wet ground. When it isn't raining, my friends and I go outside and toss a ball around. We look forward to the summer, but we are glad to get outside after the long winter. The air smells so fresh in the spring. My mother always tells me not to track mud into the house. It's very muddy in our yard in the springtime. I wipe my muddy feet before I go into the house. There are a lot of puddles in my yard. I sometimes splash in the puddles, and I get wet and cold, so I have to go into the house. I like it when the snow has melted, the rain has stopped, and the sun comes out. On sunny days, I always get together with my friends. On those days, we either ride our bikes. Or play ball. My parents like to go for walks on spring evenings. They also like to clean up the yard in the spring. Everyone seems to be outside. The springtime brings people out of their houses. The birthday party. Yesterday, I went to a birthday party. My friend Jane had her tenth birthday. Her house was decorated with balloons and streamers. Her mother had baked a big birthday cake. The cake had "Happy Tenth Birthday, Jane" written on it. There were ten candles on the cake. Jane blew out the candles and made a wish. I wonder what she wished for. Your wish won't come true if you tell anyone what it was. We sang "Happy Birthday to You." At the party, we played some games. I won one of the games, so I got a prize. We also swam in Jane's swimming pool. Jane opened her gifts. Her gifts were wrapped in bright paper and bows. She got lots of nice gifts. She got some compact discs, some clothes, and some computer games. Jane thanked everyone. We ate a lot of food at Jane's party. We had hot dogs. I put mustard and ketchup on my hot dog. Then we ate cake and ice cream. We had pop to drink. I think I had too much cake and ice cream. 
I was very full by the time the party was over. We thanked Jane and her mother before we all went home. It was a very good party. Everyone had a good time. I hope Jane had a happy tenth birthday. My classroom. My classroom is a large room. It's full of brightly colored pictures. My teacher hangs pictures up all over the walls. There are blackboards at the front of the room. My teacher always has writing all over the blackboards. Sometimes the chalk squeaks when she writes on the blackboard. We cover our ears when that happens. Our classroom is full of desks. There are a lot of students in our class. Our desks are full of books, notebooks, and pens. I try to keep my desk neat, but I have a lot of things in there. My ruler and pencils are always falling out of my desk. At the back of the room is a bookcase full of books. We can sign those books out and take them home to read. I have read a lot of the books. I like mysteries and biographies, so I have taken many of those home. There are also tables at the back of the room. That's where we do our artwork. We spread out big sheets of paper and use paints or crayons to make pictures. Sometimes we cut things out of magazines with scissors and we glue pictures to the paper. I like art class. After school, my friends and I often erase the blackboards for the teacher. Then we take the erasers outside and clap them together to get the chalk dust out of them. My friends and I walk home together and talk about what we did in school and what we're going to do after supper. Vacation. My family and I went on vacation to Lake Huron. The water is beautiful and blue there, and the sand is nice and white. The week that we were there was very hot. The sun was hot, but the water was still very cold. I went swimming and tried to catch little fish in my hands. I was careful not to get sunburned. We stayed at a hotel that had a pool and a game room. I played pinball and video games sometimes. I like to swim in the hotel pool, but I like the beach better. I would lie on a big beach towel and get warm. Then I would jump in the water and cool off. Sometimes I would just lie on the sand and watch the waves roll up on shore. I found some seashells and saw a crab walking on the sand. At first, I was a bit lonely because I didn't know anyone there. It wasn't long before I met some other kids my age. We built sandcastles together and swam in the lake. The other kids were from different towns, so we told each other stories about our schools and friends. We found that we had a lot in common, even though we were from different places. Our families got together and went to restaurants together. We played volleyball on the beach, and we sat around a campfire at night and sang songs. At the campfire. We would roast marshmallows on a stick. I always burn my marshmallows. That is okay. I like them that way. Mostly, we just swam in the lake until we were very tired. I was sorry when our vacation was over. I had a good time at Lake Huron. I met some very good friends there. We still write to each other. Maybe we'll see each other next summer. My house. I live in a two-story house. The bottom of the house is painted white. The upper part of the house is made of red brick. The chimney is also made of red brick. If you go through the front door and turn right, you'll see the living room. The living room is very large and comfortable. There are easy chairs, a coffee table, and a sofa in there. I like to sit in there and relax. Next to the living room is the dining room. There are a dining table and chairs in there. We use this room whenever we have visitors over for dinner. Beside the dining room is the kitchen. The kitchen has a stove and a refrigerator in it. There's also a kitchen table with some benches at it. Most of the time, we eat in the kitchen. Upstairs, there are three bedrooms. My parents' bedroom is very big. They have a large queen-sized bed in there, and there are two closets for their clothes. My room is smaller. My room is painted pink, and I have ruffled curtains on the windows. From my bedroom window, you can see the front yard. There's a pine tree in the front yard. My brother's bedroom 
is painted blue. He has blinds on the windows. He has a bunk bed in his room. If he has a friend stay over, one of them can sleep on the top bunk, and the other can sleep on the bottom bunk. You can see the backyard from his bedroom window. There are rose bushes and a picnic table in the backyard. There is also a white fence that has a gate in it. In the basement, there is a recreation room. This is where we watch television and have friends over to visit. The laundry room is also in the basement. There's a washing machine and a dryer in there. Beside our house is a garage. We keep the car in the garage whenever the weather is bad. Our house is just the right size for our family. Friends are always welcome at our house. My family. My grandparents are coming to visit us from Calgary, Alberta. My father is very happy because they are his parents, and he's glad that he will see them. We don't see them very often because Calgary is a long way from Toronto. My grandparents have two sons: my father and my uncle Bill. Uncle Bill is married to my aunt Susan. They have a daughter who is my cousin. My cousin is a lot older than I, so we do not have a lot in common. They also have a son who is the same age as me. He is my favorite cousin because we both like the same television shows and the same games. I have two brothers and one sister. My brothers are both younger than I. They are twins, so they have the same birthday. My sister is one year older than I. People say that my sister and I look alike. We both have blonde hair and blue eyes. My mother's parents live near us. They are my grandmother and grandfather who visit us often. My mother does not have any brothers or sisters. She is an only child. I like it when all my family is together. I don't have a lot of cousins like some people do, but I have fun with my relatives. My uncle will often take my cousin and me to the movies. I like to take my grandparents for walks so they can see my school and they can meet my friends. My parents talk to my brothers and my sister and I a lot. We are a very close-knit family. People who have close families are very lucky. Winter. Once the fall is over and the snowflakes start to fall, I get very excited. I can hardly wait for the ground to be covered with a blanket of white snow. I put on my mittens, my scarf, my hat, coat, and winter boots, and I run out into the fluffy snow. I have to be careful not to slip on the ice. It can get very icy and cold in the winter. The first thing that I do is to build a snowman. I sometimes build a snow fort too. My friends and I have a good snowball fight. We laugh a lot, and our cheeks and noses get very red. When we get too cold, we go into the house and have a cup of hot chocolate. My father fills the backyard with water that freezes and turns into an ice rink. When the ice is hard enough, my friends and I get our skates, and we go out on the ice to play hockey. All of my friends own hockey sticks. I am usually the goalie, and I have to keep the puck from going into the net. My sister and her friends don't really like to play hockey; they would rather just skate around on the ice. I took skating lessons, so I don't usually fall down. My little brother is just learning to skate, so he falls down a lot. My father has to shovel the snow off the paths and the driveway in the winter. I help him. Shoveling snow is hard work. When my dad and I finish shoveling the driveway, we go into the house and warm our hands and feet in front of the fireplace. There is probably nothing more beautiful than fresh fallen snow on the trees. In the morning, when the sun shines on the snow, it glistens. I like to leave my footprints in the snow. Winter can be very beautiful. And exciting. Autumn. Some people call autumn the fall. You can call it either one. Autumn is the time when the leaves change color. They change from green to beautiful shades of gold, orange, and red. It looks like an artist has come along and painted all the trees. The air starts to get a little colder in the autumn. We begin to wear jackets or sweaters. We go back to school in the autumn. 
The teacher sometimes gets us to make leaf collections. We collect different types of leaves and make a display of them. Autumn is the time when old friends get back together and talk about what they did on their summer vacations. Halloween comes in the autumn. We dress up in costumes. Some of them are scary and some of them are funny. We go from door to door and say "trick or treat," and people give us candies. We wear masks on our faces, and we have a lot of fun. The autumn winds start to blow. The wind blows the leaves right off the trees until the trees have bare branches. My friends and I have a lot of fun outside before the winter leaves us shivering. We play football and soccer at school. After school, we ride our bikes through the piles of dry leaves. The leaves go flying through the air as we drive through them. My parents rake the leaves up and put them in a big pile. I like to jump in the big piles of leaves, but then my parents just have to rake them up again. The skies get a little cloudier in the autumn, and we know that soon there will be snow, so we enjoy the brisk autumn weather while we can. Summer. Yahoo! School is over. We are free for the summer. My friends and I run out on the last day of school into the bright summer sun. We sing a song about no more pencils and no more books. We can hardly wait to do all the summer things that we like to do. We go swimming. We play baseball. We ride our bikes and we go to the beach. We go on vacations, or some of us go to summer camp. It is just nice to run barefoot through the grass or lie on your back and look up at the clouds. Summer days are lazy days. We don't have to do schoolwork. We listen to the buzzing of the bees. We watch the birds as they fly from tree to tree. We go down to the pond and toss rocks into the water. We eat ice cream and we have barbecues. Some of my friends' parents have boats, so we go for rides in their boats. Some of my friends go to their cottages. They have cottages on lakes. Some of my friends even have summer jobs. My best friend works at a supermarket. My father pays me to do jobs for him. I cut the grass, take out the garbage, and wash the car. I like to be outside in the sunshine. On Sundays, my mother will pack a picnic lunch, and we go down to the park. Sometimes we play baseball. There is also a tennis court at the park. I'm a very good tennis player. My sister just likes to swing on the swings and slide down the slide. We eat our sandwiches and watch out for the ants that always seem to be at picnics. After we have our lunch, my sister and I run off to play with the other children. My dad has a nap, and my mother reads her book. My skin gets brown from the sun in the summer. Summer is my favorite season. I like the sounds, smells, and feelings that come with the summer sun. Summer is a lot of fun. I wish summer could go on forever. The doctor. I didn't feel very well last week. I had a sore throat and a fever. My mother took me to see the doctor. When we got there, the nurse took my name and said that the doctor would be with me soon. The doctor was a very nice man in a white jacket. I had seen the doctor before when I had my tonsils out at the hospital. The doctor took a light and looked in my ears. He put a stick on my tongue and he shone his light into my mouth. He looked at my throat. He said that my throat was a bit swollen and red. He felt my neck and said my glands were swollen. He took my temperature and said that it was quite high. He listened to my heart. And he made me cough. He asked me some questions. He said he might have to do some tests. He sent me to get some blood taken out of my arm. I was scared, but it didn't really hurt. The doctor gave me some pills and told me to take one in the morning and one at night. He told me to drink lots of fluids. He told me to get plenty of sleep. I did exactly what the doctor told me to do. It wasn't very long before I was feeling well again. I think that I might like to be a doctor when I grow up. I would like to make people feel better. The dentist. My friend's father is a dentist. He has an office near my house. I went to see him on Thursday. His nurse told me to sit in a very big chair. 
She tied a bib under my chin. The dentist came in. He examined my teeth with some shiny silver tools. He looked at my front teeth and my back teeth. He told me that the back teeth were called molars. He told me to open wide. He had a little mirror that he used to look at my teeth. He said that I had good, strong teeth. He told me that I didn't have any cavities. I told him that I didn't eat a lot of candies and that I always brush my teeth after every meal. He said that was very good. He asked me if I flossed my teeth, and I said yes. I use dental floss every day. He told me that my teeth were healthy because I took very good care of them. He left and told me to keep up the good work. The dental hygienist came in, and she said that she would clean my teeth for me. She scraped my teeth with a sharp tool, and then she put some polish on my teeth and began to clean them. When she was done, she told me to spit into a bowl, and then I rinsed my mouth out with water. I looked into a mirror and saw that my teeth were very shiny and white. If I take care of my teeth, I'll have them forever. I would like to keep my teeth healthy and white. I like to smile. The school play. We are putting on a play at school. Some of the students are actors in the play. Some people are building the sets. Some people will sew costumes, and some people will be makeup artists. The teacher is the director of the play. The play will be held on a big stage in the gymnasium. The curtains will open, the lights will go on, and the play will begin. It will be very exciting. All of our families will come to see the play. They will clap when the play is over. My friend is very good at cutting wood and building things. He's helping to build the set. My other friend, Michael, is an artist, so he is painting the set so that it looks like a forest. My friend Marie likes to put makeup on people, so she is a makeup artist. She will put makeup on me so that I will look like an old woman. Some of the mothers help to sew the costumes. The play is called Hansel and Gretel. I will play the part of the witch. The boy who plays Hansel has to wear shorts and a shirt. I wear a witch's hat and a black dress. I also carry a broom. Some of the people in my class will be dressed like trees and flowers. This is a musical play, and the trees and flowers will sing to Hansel and Gretel as they walk through the forest. I can hardly wait for opening night. I want my family and friends to see me acting on stage. I hope they will like the play. We have all learned our lines and worked very hard at making this play a success. Emotions. Do you ever think about your emotions? What kinds of things make you sad? I get sad when I get a bad mark in school or when someone that I like moves away. I sometimes see sad movies that make me cry. I don't like to be sad. I don't like to have a frown on my face. I like to be happy. I'm happy most of the time. Parties make me happy. Being with my friends makes me happy. Lots of things make me happy. If someone tells me a joke, I laugh. I enjoy laughing. Funny movies make me laugh. I think that people look the best when they smile. What kinds of things make you mad? I get mad when my brother breaks one of my toys. I try not to show it when I get mad. My parents get mad at me if I come home late. I don't think anger is a good emotion. It is best to stay calm and talk things over. Emotions come from inside you, but they show on your face. People can tell when you're mad or sad or happy. I prefer to look happy. Sometimes I even smile when I'm feeling sad, and the smile makes me feel a little better. My first job. I just got a job at the grocery store. This is my first job. I will receive a paycheck every two weeks. I wear a uniform. The uniform has the name of the grocery store on it. I have many jobs at the grocery store. I have to collect all the carts from the parking lot and bring them back into the store. I have to put all the produce out for the people to see. I will be putting out the vegetables. There are carrots, lettuce, cabbages. Cucumbers and beans to put out this morning. I also have to put the fruit out on the stand so that it looks nice. 
The oranges roll away when I put them out, so I have to be careful. I put out the apples, bananas, and grapes. I stack boxes up so that people can buy cereal and cookies. I have to be careful, or the boxes will fall. There are cans of things which also need to be placed on the shelves. Yesterday, I filled the shelves with canned vegetables and soup. I like talking to people at the grocery store. This morning, a lady asked me where the bakery department was. She needed a loaf of bread. I have directed people to the meat department and to the dairy products. I would like to work in the bakery. I think I would like to bake cakes and decorate them. It would be fun to bake breads and cookies. Or maybe I would like to be a cashier and work at the cash register. I am very good at counting money. I am enjoying my job at the grocery store. I hope that I can continue to work here part time during the school year. The lie. Yesterday, I told a lie. I don't feel very good about it. I was bouncing a ball in the kitchen, and the ball bounced up and broke a cup. It was one of my mother's best cups, so I was afraid that she would be mad. I put the broken cup back on the table, and I didn't tell anyone that I had broken it. That night, my mother asked who had broken the cup. My brother said, "Not me." My sister said, "I didn't do it." I said, "I didn't break the cup," but I was lying. My mother said that we would all be punished if someone didn't tell the truth and say who broke the cup. I still did not tell her that I had broken it. She gave us one more chance. And she said she wasn't mad about the cup; she just wanted us to be honest. I still didn't say anything. My brother, sister, and I all got sent to our rooms. We had to stay in our rooms all morning. My brother said it wasn't fair. I felt very bad because my brother and sister were being punished because of me. I went to my mother and told her that I had broken the cup. She said that she was not upset about the broken cup. She knew that it was an accident. She was disappointed in me because I hadn't come forward and told the truth. She said that she wouldn't have punished me if I had been honest with her. I told my brother and sister that I was sorry. I felt bad because they were punished because I was dishonest. I told my mother that I was sorry that I had lied to her. I told her that I had learned a lesson. Honesty is the best policy. It is better to tell the truth. It is not a good feeling when people don't trust you. I have learned that lying just hurts people. Sometimes it is hard to be honest, but it is the best way to be. Hobbies. A lot of people have hobbies. Hobbies are interesting things that people like to do in their spare time. My father has a hobby. He has a model railroad set that he put together. A tiny electric train runs through make-believe villages and travels through tunnels and over mountains. My father also enjoys sailing. He has a real sailboat that he takes us out on. He is teaching me how to sail. I like to collect things. I collect comic books, stamps, and coins. I trade comic books with some of my friends, and sometimes I buy comic books at stores. Some of the very old comic books are worth a lot of money. I have stamps from all over the world. Whenever any of my friends get a letter from a faraway place, they save the stamps for me. I have stamps from England, Japan, Australia, and even Russia. I use a magnifying glass to look at the stamps, and I keep them in a special album. I don't have too many coins yet, but I have a very old dime from Canada, and I have a coin with a hole in it from Africa. My mother used to collect dolls when she was a little girl. The dolls wore costumes from different countries. My friend John's hobby is painting. He does oil painting. He has even sold some of his paintings. He is a good artist. My friend Linda sews. She has made clothes for herself and some of her friends. Maybe Linda will be a fashion designer when she gets older. Sometimes people's hobbies lead them into their careers. Christmas. In December, Christmas comes. We get a holiday from school, and our parents get a few days off from work. Our family gets ready for Christmas by decorating the house. We decorate inside and out. On the outside of the house, we put up lights that twinkle and glow.
We have a wooden Santa Claus and a reindeer set that my father puts up on the roof. Inside, we put up a Christmas tree. Some years, we have a real tree. Real pine trees smell nice, but you have to be careful that they don't dry out and start a fire. This year, we have an artificial tree. We hang tinsel and ornaments on the tree. We also hang strands of light on the tree and put a star at the top. Everyone thinks that the tree is beautiful when we turn on the lights. We place gifts under the tree. There is a gift for me under the tree. It is wrapped in red paper and it has a big green bow on it. Red and green are the Christmas colors. On Christmas Eve, my brother and sister and I will hang our stockings near the fireplace. Santa Claus comes down the chimney and fills our stockings full of toys and goodies. On Christmas morning, it is exciting to see what Santa has left for you. My mother will make a big turkey dinner for us on Christmas Day. We have lots of vegetables and good-tasting foods to go with the turkey. We will have dessert too. Some of my family like Christmas pudding, but I will just have ice cream. Last year, some carolers came to the door. It was snowing outside. They stood in the snow and sang Christmas carols to us. My father gave them some money, and my mother gave them some hot chocolate to warm them up. They had lovely voices, and they sang some of my favorite carols. We also collect food. Gifts and money for some of the people in town who cannot afford to have Christmas. My family is collecting things for a poor family who live near here. We had fun deciding which toys to buy for the children in that family. It was a good feeling to share with people who do not have as much as you do. My parents have always taught us that Christmas is a time for giving, not receiving. I think they're right. Pretending. I like to pretend. I like to make up things that aren't real. I use my imagination. I was pretending that I was in a time machine. I set the date for a prehistoric time. I turned on the time machine and it buzzed and whirred and spun madly. When it stopped spinning, I opened the door and stepped out into a very thick jungle. I listened carefully to the sounds of the jungle. I could hear strange animal noises and the leaves were rustling. I wasn't sure if I'd gone back in time or had just landed in a jungle somewhere in the 21st century. It didn't take me long to realize that I had indeed gone back in time. A very strange bird-like creature with a large beak flew overhead. I had never seen anything like it in my life. I took a few steps out into the long grass and ferns. I didn't want to go too far away from my time machine. I heard a noise over on my right side. There was a man who looked quite different from me. He was dressed in an animal skin, and he carried a big stick. I didn't want him to see me, so I hid behind a tree. He didn't speak any language that I could understand. He grunted at someone who must have been in the distance. Then I felt the earth shake beneath my feet. I heard giant thumps on the ground as the floor of the jungle shook. The man in the animal skin began to run. I saw why he was running. A giant dinosaur appeared above the tops of the trees. It was bigger than anything I had ever seen. My heart began to pound in my chest. It was coming toward me. I ran toward my time machine and jumped in. I set the dial for the 21st century. The machine whirred and buzzed. My time machine landed in the 21st century. I got away just in time. A baby. My aunt just had a baby girl. We went to the hospital to visit my aunt and to see the new baby. My aunt was feeling fine, although she was just a bit tired. She walked with us to a big window that had lots of babies behind it. She pointed to a crib with a baby in it. The baby was wrapped in a pink blanket. We all said how pretty the baby looked. I couldn't believe how tiny the baby was. She was asleep, so we couldn't see her eyes. When the baby went home, we went to visit her. We heard the baby. She was crying. My aunt said the baby was hungry. My aunt had a baby bottle full of warm milk. She fed the baby with it. The baby was happy after that. My aunt patted the baby on the back until the baby burped, and then the baby fell asleep. I held the baby. I looked at her tiny fingers and tiny toes. I was very careful with her. She opened her eyes and looked at me. I spoke to the baby, but I knew that she could not understand me. Babies have to learn to walk and talk. My aunt changed the baby. Babies wear diapers, so they need to be changed often. The baby has a lot of toys, but she is still too young to play with them. 
My aunt says that it won't be long before the baby is crawling and trying to talk. Babies are cute. I have seen pictures of myself when I was a baby, and it's hard to believe that I was once that small. A wedding. The church bells are ringing. I am inside the church, waiting for my cousin to walk down the aisle. Today is her wedding day. She is a bride. The organist is playing a song on the organ. We all stand up and watch my cousin walk down the aisle. She is arm in arm with her father. She is dressed in a long white dress and a veil. She looks so beautiful. She looks like a princess. The man who she is going to marry is standing at the front of the church. He is the groom. He looks nice too. He is wearing a suit and he has a flower in his lapel. The minister says words to the couple, which will make them man and wife. The bride and groom smile at each other, but they seem to be a little bit nervous. They give each other gold rings to wear to symbolize that they are married. They kiss each other and walk out of the church as the organist plays joyous music. Some of the people in the church cried at the wedding, but not because they were sad. Everyone in the church is very happy for the couple. A photographer takes pictures of the happy couple. We wish them well and look forward to the reception where we will have dinner and we will dance and have a good time until it is very late. The bride will throw her bouquet of flowers, and it is said whoever catches the bouquet will be the next bride. The next day, the bride and groom will leave for their honeymoon. My cousin and her husband are going to Mexico for their honeymoon. A surprise. Last Friday, my dad came home from work and said that he had a surprise for us. We tried to guess what the surprise might be. My brother guessed that we were going out for dinner. My dad said no. My other brother asked if my father had tickets to a hockey game. My dad said no. My sister asked if we were going on a trip. My dad said no. My mother knew what the surprise was, so she just stood and smiled at us. I guess that we might be getting a swimming pool. My dad said, "No,、nope. we were getting very frustrated trying to guess what the surprise might be." My brother asked how big the surprise was. My dad said that the surprise was quite small. We were not sure what the surprise could be. Will we all like it? I asked. Yes, my dad replied. Every one of you will love this surprise. We heard a noise. It was a crying noise. Your surprise wants to see you, my dad said. He opened the door to the bedroom, and a tiny puppy came running out. We were all very excited. Our surprise was a puppy. It was a little baby spaniel. The puppy loved all of us. She ran around and licked all of our faces. We had always wanted a dog. We take turns feeding the puppy and taking her out for walks. She is growing quickly and will soon be an adult dog. We all agree that the puppy was the nicest surprise my dad could have given us. Rhyming words. Sometimes my friends and I play a game. It's something we made up, so it doesn't have a name. We like to take words that rhyme. We put them together line by line. Do you get the picture now? We're playing the game, and this is how. I might say I like to drive a car. I really don't like to go very far. If I decide to take a walk, I'd go with a friend so that we could talk. Do you see that these lines rhyme? Play the game if you have the time. We could talk about school or even playing. Do you know what I am saying? Rhyming words is easy to do. It's fun for me. It can be fun for you. Just join in and say something, or make it into a song that you can sing. There are so many words that rhyme with others, like smile and mile, and mothers and brothers. I could spend all day just making up these things. I could let my imagination fly on wings, up to the clouds and back to my mind. There are so many rhymes that I can find. There are some words that are hard to find rhymes for. I don't use those words anymore. I like to choose words that are easy to rhyme, like cat and bat, or lime and time. So give it a try. I know you'll have fun. I'll say goodbye. My rhyming is done. Opposites. Some things are opposites of each other. The opposite of black is white. The opposite of happy is sad. 
If I am at the opposite side of the room from you, it means that I am at the other side of the room that you are on. The opposite of up is down, and the opposite of left is right. Do you know what the opposite of young would be? Old is the opposite of young. What is the opposite of dirty? Clean is the opposite of dirty. Big is the opposite of small. Man is the opposite of woman. Boy is the opposite of girl. Sometimes people think the opposite things than other people. Someone might be wrong and someone might be right. The opposite of mother is father. See if you can think of some opposites. It is cold in the winter and it is hot in the summer. My father is very tall and my brother is very short. A rock is hard, but a pillow is soft. An ocean is deep, but a puddle is shallow. I might tell the truth, but I might tell a lie. All of these things are opposites. The morning is bright, but the night is dark. A feather is light, but an elephant is heavy. Sugar is sweet, but a lemon is sour. A jet plane is fast, but a turtle is slow. I can go out in the day, or I can go out at night. I might love to swim, or I might hate to swim. It is interesting to see how many opposites you can think up. I could say hello, but I think it's time to say goodbye. The smart paper boy. In my town, there is a paper boy who just got an award for his actions. This boy delivered the local newspaper every morning. One of the people to whom he delivered the paper was an elderly man. This man lived alone. The paper boy had often spoken to the man, so he knew that the man lived alone. The paper boy always left the newspaper in the man's mailbox. One morning, the boy noticed that the man had not picked up his newspaper or his mail from the day before. The boy felt that something was not right. All day at school, the boy had a feeling that something might be wrong with the man. After school, the boy went back to the man's house to see if he had taken his mail and newspapers. The newspapers and mail were still in the mailbox. The boy knocked on the man's door. He could hear a faint voice, but could not hear what the person was saying. He tried to open the door, but it was locked. The boy knew that something wasn't right, so he went home and called the police station. He explained to the police that the man lived alone. He gave the address of the man's house to the police. The police knocked on the door, and they also heard the faint voice. The police got into the house and found the man lying at the bottom of the stairs. The man had fallen and broken his hip. The man had not been able to get up. He had been afraid that nobody would find him. He was very grateful to the paper boy for caring enough to get the police. The boy got an award. The man said the boy was a hero. The police said that the boy was an example of a very good citizen. The paper boy and the man are very good friends. The man will never forget what the paper boy did for him. Niagara Falls. I live in Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is a famous place. A lot of tourists visit here every year. Most of the tourists come to see the waterfalls. The waterfalls are very beautiful and powerful. At night, they shine lights on the falls that make them even more dramatic. Tourists line up against the railings to watch the water as it tumbles into the Niagara River. There are other things in Niagara Falls that the tourists like to visit. There are a lot of gift shops and museums. There are many hotels that the tourists can stay at. Tourism is very important to Niagara Falls. Many people work in the tourism industry. There are many jobs in the tourism industry. You can take a special bus and tour Niagara Falls. You can ride in a horse-drawn carriage in Niagara on the Lake, or you can take a balloon ride over the falls from the American side. You can even ride in a helicopter over the falls. Niagara Falls is very busy in the summertime. Summer is the time when most tourists visit here. Sometimes the tourists think it's raining near the falls, but it is only the mist that rises from the mighty waterfalls. There are many legends and stories connected to Niagara Falls. There is a special legend called the Maid of the Mist. There are stories about the daredevils who thought that they were more powerful than the falls. 
Some of them went over the falls in barrels, and others walked on tight ropes over the falls. Both of those things are very dangerous. I stay behind the railings when I look at the falls. I know just how powerful the falls are. It is interesting to discover all the stories that there are about Niagara Falls. The library. One of my favorite places is the library. I go there to get books for school, and I go there to get books for pleasure. I often read mysteries for fun. In the summer, I read lots of mysteries. I like to sit outside and read. In the winter, I have to read books for school. I go to the library to find out things for my projects. I often use the dictionary and the atlas. Some of my friends go with me, and we sit at the tables and do our homework. We can't make a lot of noise in the library. People have to be quiet when they are in a library. When I first went to the library, I was confused about how to find books. The librarian showed me how to use the computer to find books. Now I am able to do all my research myself. I have read some very interesting books. I have learned a lot from library books. I always bring the books back on time so I don't get a fine. I am collecting books at home. People often give me books for gifts. Soon I will have my own library. Reading is a good hobby. Everyone in my family likes to read. The library has other things besides books. There are videos at the library. There are also compact discs at the library. I have a library card, so I can get books, videos, or compact discs whenever I want to. My mother sometimes goes to the library to look at the magazines. She gets some good recipes from the magazines. My father looks for books on how to build things. He is building some bookshelves for me at the moment. He found the instructions in a book. My little brother reads children's books. He likes books about trains. I have liked books ever since I was very small. My mother says that reading is a good habit to get into. When I grow up, I have been thinking about what I'd like to be when I grow up. There are so many choices. I could be a principal like my father. I could be a teacher. I like animals. Maybe I should be a veterinarian. My cat just went to the veterinarian to get her shots. I don't think my cat was too happy to be there. I could be a farmer and grow vegetables. Maybe I could be a doctor and cure people. If I was good enough, I could be a famous sports person or a singer. I could be an actor on television or in the movies. Maybe I would like to be a policeman or a fireman. I could rescue people. I can play the piano. Maybe I should be a musician. I could be a lawyer. I sometimes watch shows about lawyers defending people. Lawyers have to be able to speak well. I could be a carpenter and work with wood, or I could be a welder and work with metal. There are just so many jobs. I could work in a restaurant. I could cook food, or I could serve food. I could be an airline pilot or the captain of a ship. I could be a repairman or an artist. The world is full of jobs. Some of the jobs require a lot of education. Some require a little bit of training, and some require a lot of training. It's all up to me. I can be whatever I want to be.